Spore, joined this morning by Justin Mason. Justin, good morning, sir. Good morning. Ready to get blinded. <laughs> Ready to get blinded by the eclipse. <laughs> I was blinded by all these injuries this weekend. Did you avoid the carnage? Uh, yeah. Um, wow, that's I impressive. Have, I have been. I mean, I I do have like like one or two leagues with Strider, but nothing like in like a league where like I'm like oh like this is a super super important league. Um, sure. I guess uh, one of my teams, the sleeper in the bust um, uh, head to head league, is devastated, absolutely devastated by injuries. Like I already had a bunch of injuries, mm -hmm. um, and then. I have both Luis Robert and I have Spencer Strider on this team. Oof. Um, and coming that, off a loss to uh, to Matty Rums, yeah, Rum Diesel. So now you're three six and one. I'm two and eight. I, I'm a, I'm slow start again this year, but at least I set my lineup, so I can't blame it on that. But uh, yeah, at like, least I, it's at least there's talent, right? It's a 14 teamer, but we don't have middle, we don't have corner, we don't have five outfielders. So you might be able to find some talent, right? Yeah, my current um, bench. And IL is Sonny Gray, Eduardo Rodriguez, Jordan Romano, Spencer Strider. We'll flip Strider Joshua. and Gray. Yeah. Gray's back. Even if you don't start him, you can at least get that IL spot. But I'm going to need to drop Eduardo Yeah, you're Rodriguez. up against it, bro. Yeah. I think Eduardo has to go. Yeah. And well, Sonny Gray you know, comes back this week, so... That's uh, that's a little bit nice. So he's going to be on a pitch count. So he's like, only going 65. Um. I'm not starting him in my in one of my uh, NFBC okay. leagues. That that was you answered the question then. Yeah, I was going to ask if you were starting him anywhere because yeah, I think in this league, I mean, this is 14 teams. This isn't like baby shallow or anything. The roster is a little slighter, so it plays probably more like a in in the 12, 13 team range as a 14 teamer because it is only three outfielders but two utils. Um, so he gets Philly this week, a little tune up, and then Sonny Gray goes back home to or not not home, but that's where he started. Goes back to Oakland. And then hosts Milwaukee. So he gets a two step. I'm throwing him in next week. Pretty much no matter what he does this week, unless obviously he gets hurt again or something. But even if Gray is bumpy against Philly, the at Oakland home to Milwaukee is a definite for me. And if a league's deep enough, I might even take the 65 pitches here and try hope that I can get four or five innings. Like when when he's at his most efficient, Sonny Gray can get you five innings, but it's yeah. probably gonna be four. And, you know, you're hoping that they're just solid. But um, he's coming back. A lot of other guys are leaving. Maybe you uh, have Bieber or Strider in a situation where you have Gray and you can make that easy switch. That would work. But that's not the case for everybody. We are just going to talk about the carnage this week. Four major injuries. Bieber confirmed out for the year. Strider almost certainly definitely going to miss a long period of time. We'll talk about shallow, deep league replacements for those two. Trevor Story out for a while with a shoulder in injury. Looked really bad. You could tell he knew right away that it was bad. Uh, we'll talk some replacements there. And then Luis Robert Jr. facing a lengthy absence with a hip flexor strain. And we will talk about replacements there. So pretty nightmarish weekend. Obviously, all the talk is around the pitching because of the two big pitchers. And then coming on the heels of the Yuri Perez injury right before that, I, th I feel like we kind of do this every year, though. We want to have this big referendum on, on what's going on. I don't think it's the pitch clock. I don't think injuries are exponentially higher than they've been. I think it's the velocity. I think it's always the foundational aspect is the velocity. Everyone throwing as hard as they can for as much as they can, you know, just empty in the tank and the way they're training to do that. Now you're throwing in all the spin and all that that's adding to it a bit more. I'm not saying that the pitch clock isn't maybe exacerbating it a little bit, but you could turn the pitch clock off and the injuries wouldn't change tangibly. I don't think, what do you think about it? I mean, I definitely think it is maybe like the straw that's breaking the camel's back at this point. Only but. conversationally, statistically, that it's just not showing to be the case. Even with yeah. the with the downturn, again, it's because we've got three big events here. We're going to look for one thing to blame. It's the velocity. Yeah, I think it's. I think it is a, a combination. Of, I mean, for sure, it's velocity. Like guys are trying to throw harder. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at both. Uh, Strider and Bieber, especially like Bieber went to drive line to try to yeah. throw harder this last, uh, this off season. Uh, it worked until it didn't. Yeah. Uh, and then Strider, you know, added a new pitch on top of velocity. So I think like, 
I say it every year when we have these injuries, like added velocity is not always a good thing. Um, What's well, positive for input, success. Yeah. It, it's, it does add to your injury risk though. A hundred percent. Like mm-hmm. pitchers are just risky. Pitchers break. I, I don't think this makes me any less likely to take pitchers early. Um, Cause mid and late round ones do too. Hitters can get hurt too. We're going to talk, you know, Luis Robert is a second round type of guy. And he's got, he got hurt too. So it's not just like hitters are this super safe avenue. Pitcher injuries are higher. I'm not blind to that. I'm not saying that, that that's not the case. I'm just saying like, we can't predict injuries. I'm not necessarily going to run away from them. I am glad I didn't take Strider at number one overall though. Um, Isn't it interesting in though event. in the year that like, this was a year where we had like probably the fewest amount of first round uh, pitchers. Uh, yeah. We lost both of them. Yep. Like, Immediately. Strider and Cole out on April 8th. Unbelievable. Like, yeah. It and just, yeah. It, it, I mean, it's scary taking pictures early f- for this reason because you lose them and it just feels. This is why. Here's the thing. If you are going to take them early, just back them up. Don't make yeah. them your only thing. That That's really my only you know, take away from a draft standpoint, like you don't have to be afraid of early pitchers if you still like to maybe take that ace because a lot of time aces work. And then they're one of nine instead of one of 14 on your roster. And there's a lot of winning teams that have aces that, that they took early. You know, you can find just as many examples of it working as the injury blowups. So it's not a referendum that says, oh, you can't possibly take them early. You can also still Back win up, when though. you lose them, right? Exactly. Like, Do not you're... quit your leagues. The year Phil Dusso won the main event, uh, he had take he had gone pitcher pitcher um, and lost. I can't remember if it was Bauer or Degrom. Or, uh, Degrom, yeah, he DeGrom. was known. Um, you know, he's known for cutting Degrom quickly. Now, in fairness, and I don't say this to take anything away from him, he got ninety two of the sickest innings possible um, from from Degrom. Well, he also drafted Carlos Rodon in like the 29th round that year, which was excellent. And again, yeah. that's not to take anything away no, it's, it's amazing point, that yeah, exactly. he had that ace in the 29th round mm-hmm. so then when he lost somebody early and you don't it doesn't have to be a 29th round hit what i'm saying though is too many people will take like a strider or a and burns wait early eight rounds until exactly that's where i think the mistake comes in when you're drafting early instead pitchers. what you did was not take a starter until the eighth round correct i went and the other way with Tanner it Tanner Bybee, who's you know amazing I mean, he looked great after, you know, listen, gave one away to Oakland, which was a yeah. bummer, uh, but bounced right back. I have all the confidence in him. You know, that's an interesting rotation there with Bybee, Cutter Crawford, uh, you Darvish. Shota Imanaga did not start him this week because I was scared of the Dodgers start. Well, he had four scoreless and then the rain now. came in. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He, he's jumping right in to the rotation this week with the trip to Seattle on the docket. Uh, Kenta Maeda bounced back ish against Oakland. Really Brent Rooker was the only thing that got him. So we'll see what's, what's up with him. But anyway, uh, let's talk about the two guys that are out. Obviously you're cutting Bieber. That's that's in. That's all. That's easy. Were you cutting Schreider this weekend? Or were you, were you waiting for a little bit more definitive news on like how long he's going to be out and everything? Um, what were you doing? Say in like a main event situation. I know you don't have in either of those, but yeah. 15 team mixer, no ILs. Were you cutting Strider yet? Probably not. I just think he's too valuable to until we have a little bit more just in case. Yep. But I agree. I I if somebody did, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Uh, but I I just can't imagine anybody did. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll I, just I, look it up. I doubt it. Yeah, we can look big. I would think that you'd have to be in a really sticky situation where you just desperately need the spot. You've been decimated. And you can't possibly hold because that's the only way that I can really think that you'd have to cut Strider. Yeah. Looking I mean, at the main events. Yeah. No. Uh, oh, actually, excuse me. Six. Six wow. cuts. Only owned in the only roster in 90% of leagues. Um, oh, Greg, Greg cut him. And he told me that he was. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. My boy, Greg. It's he, probably the right decision. Um, if this turns out to be like, I'm at, he's out for a month then that's just going to be brutal uh, because someone's going to drop $500 on it. Sure. For a month. Uh, but I think the chances that he comes back to me are like 10%. So I, I don't totally even think understand. it's that high. Yeah, probably not. And I think you're looking at 
like I think the one month thing would be you know the Best biggest case scenario, yeah. stroke of luck ever. I think you're looking at a minimum of two months, and I'm just not holding the guy for two months going six IL slots. It's so, six, oh, six bench slots or um, six bench spots, excuse me. So I, I understand ma making the jump I would, there. I mean, I hold him like I mean to like Spencer Strider, like he is just such a huge difference. Like he with 90 innings, he could still be a top 40 starter. Um, sure. And like imagine like adding that to your rotation. I mean, the I mean, I I drafted Cole knowing I had to hold on to it. But imagine so. what you could be getting off the waiver wire with that spot. Uh, that's that's Greg's team. That's so in much Trevor overall. Williams. So much. Yeah, yeah, you can get all sorts of Trevor Williams. Uh, but yeah, that team's in fourth overall right now for Greg. So he he went, he went aggressive with it. Yeah, big forty-seven point change this week surged up the board um in his league so we'll see but let's talk about replacements okay folks obviously facing the uh, beaver and strider injuries they got to figure out what to do let's focus on shallow leagues first pulling some roster rates from fantasy pros here to get an idea so hopefully uh you know they they're not steering me wrong here that these guys are available in your 10s and 12s let's start with tanner hauk um in boston so far Looking pretty interesting. Uh, in, in fact, that Boston rotation, been talking about it now for uh, a lot of the spring that really stood out to me as interesting. And so far, they've all been awesome, except for Brian Bay a little bit. I think Brian Bay has like one bad start and one decent one. The other four guys have ERAs under one in two starts apiece. Obviously, that's you know, remarkable. And they don't even have sample. their Giolito, like, who is exactly. their big offseason signing. Like, they it, lost uh, him, and it didn't matter because Hauk was then secured a spot. He's got two six-inning scoreless outings, um, seven punchies at the Angels, ten at Oakland before that. Where are we at on Tanner Hauk in, in shallow leagues? Is he somebody that you would chase for Bieber or Strider? Yeah, especially because he gets the Angels again on Saturday. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. It says 46% uh, roster, so that's why I was like, yeah, that's pretty available. I'll take that gamble right there. Uh, I'm not a big Hulk guy, but like I just think right now. What's like, your aversion to him? Because he's a decent I, prospect. I, I think there's there's been some hype. I'm not trying to like aggro challenge you, but I'm just curious. What's your aversion there? Because I'm, I'm pretty intrigued by this. I I just didn't think he'd actually like stay in the rotation. I thought he was going to be like a multi inning reliever, which is one of the ways Boston has employed him. Uh, but they're giving him an opportunity, and I think this is an opportunity he can run with because, you know, losing Giolito for the year means, like, they don't have the depth that they had, like, you know, and so him and Whitlock are both going to, like, I think stick in this rotation for a while, and the stuff is really good uh, if he commit and, and controls it uh, consistently. So far, so good early on. I do wonder if there's going to be bumps, if he's going to struggle as the season goes on, but that is uh, a problem for later. Like, I... Yeah. especially in your 10s and 12s like yeah, don't, don't worry, worry about, about yeah don't worry about july don't worry about august like worry about like barely worry right about now. june yeah barely worry even, about june right now i wouldn't even worry about june yep like, when you're kind of churning the back end of your roster like just grab guys and ride with them until they fall apart and then if they fall apart then you go on and get the next tanner out because there will yes. be guys like that on live the in the here and now with with stuff the rest of the season questions we got to abolish them like yeah they're kind of worthless in, in most formats really yeah even in 15s like i'm not yeah. like like i when i was just joking about uh trevor williams like he was my most picked up player this week like he's not going to be on my roster next week more than likely you know depending exactly on who who he goes up against but like hey he's got a two start versus San, or at san francisco at oakland like got the uh, uh bay area two-step yeah that's and not, it's not a beautiful a, weather this week we're gonna not a bad 70, setup there for trev we're gonna hit 78 this week it's gonna be beautiful damn yeah we're up in the high 70s low 80s but taking the dogs out on some walks we already got a morning walk in today so i'm, I'm feeling good uh let's go in-house in uh in cleveland here now he's not the replacement but logan allen has had some shallow league viability or availability i should say and uh he's definitely out there in a decent number of leagues off to a pretty good start uh first off they've been playing very well so they've been supporting their pitchers nicely he's already two and oh you know wasn't great against oakland like um 
uh, like Bybee, and you're like, dang it, come on, man, you're in Oakland, start off strong for me, three runs in five innings, three strikeouts, you're like, oh, that's boring, but then six and two-thirds scoreless at Seattle with six Ks for Logan Allen, not that we were worried, by the way, um, so we, we definitely liked where he's at after two starts, is Logan Allen somebody that you see in a shallow league situation as a pickup? Yeah, especially because he has a two-start this week, and one of them is against the Chicago White Sox, uh, who I don't even know who they're going to be playing at this point. They lost their best two bats in Eloy Jimenez and Luis Robert. Uh, it's going to be like Gavin Sheets, Yon Moncada, and a bunch of other no-name players. Yeah, so, and we'll, we'll talk more about Sheets in a moment so, uh, as a potential you know, Robert replacement there. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I like Allen. I think he's really interesting and definitely somebody that uh, I would pick up in a shallower format. Yeah, he's the guy that got a little bit of added heat like towards the end of draft season, like trying to get a, a piece of the Guardians rotation that wasn't like super expensive. But um, I wish I had gotten a few more shares uh, of Allen in, in some deeper leagues. But uh, yeah, I think he's definitely a guy I'd be willing to at least stream for a little bit, especially if you are playing in a daily moves league or daily lineups league where like you can start him for this Chicago one and then drop him for the New York one um, or, or bench him for the New York one. Uh, but even that, like I'm, I'm not super afraid of the Yankees. You're not, I mean, I would start Logan out. So I, I want to be yeah. clear, but generally I'm not super keen on facing the Yankees. Um, yeah, Like it's not like, it's not a matchup like that. I'm uh, it, it's not like, the Braves. It's not like the Dodgers, where like I like I'm yeah, like oh, it's not I'm that far not. for me. I, I'm I'm a, I'm a little bit more fearful of of the Yankees. They they got that home run power too. So if it's a home run guy specifically, again, this is, does not apply to Logan Allen. I I would start Logan Allen in a good number of spots. I really like him. I think at 29 percent rostered, this is a composite of ESPN and Yahoo, by the way. So uh, that I'm pulling off of Fantasy Pros. Let me check him on our Yahoo league. I just want to see where we're at here and like how often these update, like how viable these numbers are. Cause 29 feels low. I think, I think they probably update pretty quickly. He's 45% rostered at ES uh, at Yahoo. So that would mean that he's like not rostered at all at ESPN, which I guess is possible, but that, that feels a little light. Maybe he's not as widely available. Logan Allen. Um, obviously I'm still interested. Go get him. But I wonder if maybe they didn't update these uh, these composite numbers yet because he is zero percent rostered at ESPN. There you go. How's that possible? Did Wait, you look no, up that, the right no, Logan no, Allen? I, I, looked, I must have looked up the wrong Logan Allen. That okay. Can't be. All right. All right. There we go. Uh, he is twenty percent rostered at ESPN. Okay. I don't know if it's just twenty and forty nine divided by two. Uh, but that'd be 36, so it's still a bit higher than the 29%. Okay, so then it's fine. It's viable. We'll, we'll trust these numbers within a within an error range of about 10 points. But even it's if he was 39... There's a plus or minus right now. That, you know. Yeah, exactly. So there should still be a lot of Logan Allen availability. Sorry to bog down on that, but uh, I like him. Do you like him more than Hauk? No. I don't think so. Um, as, even as a how cater, that's interesting because you were just downing how and now you're now you're big on. Is it because of the mm -hmm. upcoming matchups or? Yeah, part of it's the upcoming matchups because. But Yankees Allen's got two well, this week. I, I like White Sox Yankees, and then Allen gets Oakland the week after. Yeah, but by, I, by the time people listen to this, the White Sox one's probably gone. Well, if you listen to it the day it comes out, but that's fair. Yeah. But then, so then he gets Yankees. Oakland would be his next two from there. That's Logan Allen. No, Hulk maybe it is gets, Allen. How gets the Angels this weekend, and then Cleveland next week? Which I'm I'm still not scared of them. I know they've got the best run differential. They're on fire. I still start yeah. guys like Hauk against Cleveland yeah, uh, pretty tough. comfortably. Well, we're talking Yankees. Let's shift over to them. A guy we have talked about a decent bit, but he's still out there in quite a few leagues. And I wonder if some shallow leaguers might be frustrated with Luis Heel because now two times in a row, he had a chance at uh, perhaps locking in a nice win, but this one, he cost himself the four and two thirds at Arizona. I think, you know, they could have pushed him a little bit more. This one, he kind of did himself in four and a third, 95 pitches, uh, had a few too many walks, 
but still looking good, missing bats. I'm still very in on, on Luis Heal, just would like a win. He goes to Cleveland this weekend and then hosts Tampa Bay the following weekend. Um, I'm in on Heal. What about you in shallower formats? I love Luis Heal. I haven't actually even used him yet. He's just been sitting on my bench because of kind of the matchups. Uh, but uh, I – He's probably my favorite out of this list. He's at least my favorite out of the ones we've talked about. Um, yeah, no, I think he's my favorite out of this list. I just think the upside is so great. I don't know how many innings you're going to get, and this may be you know, a guy that moves to the bullpen at some point uh, because they're trying to save his arm. He hasn't pitched a lot of innings over the last few years, but uh, I just think his stuff is so, so good. And yeah. with that Yankees offense behind you, you're going to get opportunities to win games. Uh yeah, I I think heels at the top of the list for me. If I, if I especially if I'm thinking long term, or at least the next month. Yeah, um, I'm all I'm all over heel, so I'm in there too. I think he is tops. He, he Allen and Ann Hawker, they're really close. It's a really really good group there that you can look at. They might you know try to slow him down because you know obviously he hasn't pitched much at all. But he is 26, which isn't a baby, but it, you know, it's not old, not a baby. It's kind of in that middle. And I don't know, man. I'm just tired of these, these innings management things. They don't work. So if a guy's upright pitching well and not showing, you know, overwhelming fatigue, I'm not saying bury him and just drop seven innings, hundred plus pitches every time out. But I don't know that they should sideline him. Again, we will worry about that in the summer for Louis. Also it's also 26 and that's like, what I'm saying. I don't, like they don't need to be. And I mean, unlike maybe some of these other teams, like the Yankees don't have a lot of options to turn to like, not right not now. Like, Will Warren chase Hampton could be interesting call-ups, but they're kind of fill in types. They don't, I don't think they really have the upside of somebody like and they don't have the Louis money. On the, they don't have the money available because they don't want to go over the luxury tracks threshold uh, to like actually go out and get, someone at the trade deadline like i, I think they will if, if if it's like the real game changer yeah but like i think he's i think they probably should try to ride with him i don't know if they will because well like, it depends what they look like when cole gets back right because if cole gets back and nothing else happens then i do think he does go into the into the swingman situation where he'll get multi-inning outings out of the bullpen or maybe even get sent out to stay on uh full schedule in the minors because you got cortez rodon stroman schmidt now are we sure that those four are going to be upright by the time cole's back who knows? That's why we talk short term with heel and just worry about the here and now. And in the here and now, he's somebody I want on my team. Yeah, he's just he's only thrown forty innings over the previous two seasons yeah. combined. Like it's been rough. Like that's, he's yeah. fresh then. So I mean, let him pitch. Yeah, it's just, right. I, I I I love him. I've got him on a number of teams. So what about uh, uh, what about Seth Lugo with Houston? He's got or excuse me, he faces Houston with KC. Um, I don't love Houston, even though they're not playing very well. Like, aren't they like two and eight or some shit? Um, I don't love that start. I would start Lugo uh, at, with Houston c- coming to visit him in KC. But what I really like is the two step next week trip to San- trip to Chicago to face the White Sox and then hosting Baltimore, which you know Baltimore is tough, but I'll take it in KC's park. So even if you got him right this week for Lugo and you sat him for Houston, I think you jumped the two start next week. What do you think of Seth Lugo? Where's he rank in this group that we're looking at? Yeah, I'm I'm not starting Seth Lugo this week uh, versus Houston. I know that they're three and seven, uh, and that two of their wins have come off of pretty much no hitters. <laughs> but uh, like that Blanco offense, Blanco to save them, <laughs> unreal, dude. Like unreal. Like what a story, Ronel Blanco. It's is. awesome. Uh, it's it's been really really cool, uh, but yeah, I'm probably I'm not starting him this week versus Houston. Uh, even in my 15s, I'm going different directions. So, even in your 15s, uh, yeah, yeah. Imagine having that kind of depth. Okay, nobody needs it. No one likes I, a braggart. I'm I'm very lucky in terms of my injuries. My you know, I hate to like beat a dead horse, especially when other people are are struggling with the injuries. But like this is one of the reasons I draft so risk averse is so i don't you know if i shut get up hit by injuries, shut up i don't have the ones already on my team so. you're gonna you're um, gonna invite the injury risk by saying that you draft written yeah you can't you can't dodge injuries 
a knock on some wood right now, but you can't dodge uh, injuries. Yeah, you can't dodge them all. Um, but uh, yeah, no. So I'm probably not starting Lugo this week. I just Houston just scares the crap out of me. Like you said, they're they're three and se- three and seven, but like they're still it's a not really, the really offense's fault. Team. Yeah, it's still a really really dangerous bullpen fault. Uh, it's a really yeah. really really dangerous team. So, uh, but next week, fire them right up. I really like Lugo. I love that park. Uh, the uh, the Royals are a really, really fun team right now. And uh, well. so uh, I think he is a guy that is definitely worth, if, you, if you're thinking more about next week than this week, maybe, um, and you're kind of trying to prepare for, for next week, I think Lugo is going to be one of those top pickups in the shallower leagues that you can jump on early. Yeah, I think take a look for Lugo. He's going to be more available than some of these guys too. So if some of y'all don't have these first three available, Hauk, Allen, Heal, maybe you turn to Lugo. Shallow leagues, I won't start him against Houston. 15 teamer, I think I probably still do. Um, it is at home. But if you can avoid it, cool. Do so because Houston is tough. What about Max Meyer in the shallower formats? He's another one where you got to look forward because you don't want him against Atlanta this week. But I don't no. I don't care what the league type is. NL only, I'm not starting him against Atlanta. Um, but then he'll come back. Actually, will he be in the rotation next week? Braxton That's- Garrett is due back. Is he going to take Meyer's spot or Weathers? I think he's going to take Weathers' spot right now. I mean, I guess Cabrera's be... due back too. Actually, they got two yeah. guys due back. Okay, sorry to interrupt you, Garrett and Cabrera. Would that be I Weathers would... and Meyer or Weathers and Puck? I mean, Puck looks like thing. shit. It should be Puck and it should be Weathers. Like those should be the two guys that lose their rotation spot. It may be Meyer just because Meyer is coming off of Tommy John surgery yeah. and they may want to protect him a little bit and either move him into the bullpen or uh, or send him down to the minors where they can kind of like really closely monitor his innings. So, uh, but if it, if we're going on like who deserves to keep the rotation spot, I think Meyer deserves to keep the rotation spot over both of those guys. And we have seen Miami in the past be more aggressive with some of their younger guys, even ones coming off injuries. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Myers, the guy that holds on to the spot. Uh, but I also wouldn't be surprised to get set down. That being said, like you said, I'm not starting Meyer versus uh, the Braves, uh, but I would hold on to him to see if he gets starts next week. Yeah. He's definitely last on this list. Kind of a, you yeah. know, last resort for the shallow not because guys. of talent. But no, just no, 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 no. Of, yeah, situation. The, yeah, because you're not using them this week, and we don't know about next week. Rotowire is projecting Garrett and Cabrera to be back next week, which might not happen either. So stay tuned to news. If you like Meyer, just stay, gra- you know, stay dialed in on the news with him and figure out what's going on for your shallower formats. Uh, okay, so Hauk, Allen, Heel, Lugo, Meyer. Is that your no? Your Heel, Hauk, Allen, yeah. Lugo, Meyer. I think so. Yeah. He, I think I might be heel. I think how can Allen? I think how can Allen can be interchanged? I think. I think so too. I, honestly, I don't think they're that far from heel either. We love heel. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm right there with you. I really think the three of them are pretty interchangeable. Pick your favorite between Hauk, Allen, and heel, and I'm not going to bust you up on that. Lou goes a cut below, and then Meyer a cut below that. Uh, deep leaks. Spencer Turnbull coming off a big outing, uh, hosting Cincy. He looked sharp. It was on my bench. I just kind of wanted to see something. But then he was a big pickup this week in the main event format with a trip to St. Louis and then a hosting of Pittsburgh coming on the docket. Neither of those are super easy. Nice venue. Or, excuse me, Pittsburgh is at home, so it's not uh, PNC. But you go you go to St. Louis, so nice venue there, but a solid lineup. And then Pittsburgh coming to visit. They're the upstart. They're a pretty solid lineup there. Not easy at Citizens Bank, but I like the two-step here. I'm starting Turnbull. Did you like him in deep formats if you're replacing Strider uh, or Bieber? Yeah, unfortunately for me, though, like, everybody liked him a little bit more. Like, Okay. Uh, and, I, and I understand, like, not only does he get a two-step this week, but this is a guy that you could potentially be holding on to for a little while. I don't know if I believe as much in the going to be able to hold on to him for a long period of time, just because he's coming off of Tommy John surgery and uh, he has not thrown a lot of innings in recent seasons, but he did. Yeah, look but good he's in that. a good bit older. Like what? Yeah. Yeah. I just don't think that they're going to downshift. Him oh, I, I'm not, he's I'm not 32. necessarily. Yeah. I'm not necessarily worried about like, Hey, they're not going to throw him. I just, I don't know how long he can stay upright and effective. Uh, you know, with having had the huge layoff, uh, but 
I, I did get him in a, in a couple leagues. Uh, and I think Turnbull is a guy that you should be kind of rolling with here in your deeper formats for a little bit. And, and maybe even some like 12 teamers, uh, he's going to make some sense. So for me, like, yeah, like Turnbull went for 60 bucks in, in, uh, I think my main, um, and I just, to me, I was like, uh, I think I'd rather spend $7. How much was he? I'm sorry. I think 60. Okay. Um, For two step. I get it. Yeah. Uh, and two, like a two step that you get to hold on to for a little while. Yeah. It's not just like a two step and drop. Uh, oh no, he didn't go my main. This was one of my auctions. Uh, okay. So I went for $59. The backup did a 57, which is, uh, so that was tight. Yeah. Yeah, uh, primo uh, bidding there by uh, uh, the guy who got him. So, uh, but yeah, I think he's. I think he was one of the top guys in terms of pickups this week in main events. I uh, do now. Well, like the- he he was only available in eleven main events. It's Turnbull. Oh, really? Yeah. So there there was a lot of people that were already holding him. Um, so he went f- for triple digits in four of them, mm-hmm. and then ninety two, eighty eight, seventy nine, seventy eight, fifty seven, fifty five, forty six. The 46 was to um, our, our good friend Vlad Sedler uh, with a 44 backup. So they were really tight there. The Fab yeah, Whisper. The Fab Whisper. Two of the triple digit bids had triple digit backups. So they needed to be up Ooh. there. One of them was a little out there, 105 to 55. The other was 116 to 97. I don't think no. I would put triple digits on him. Like I I mean, I guess I understand, especially if like you just lost Bieber. If you, you lost Bieber or Strider, I yeah. totally understand going for the It's two step. I, I get it. I, you might I just, be able to hold know. on to him for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's so uh, triple digits this early is you better be getting a real difference maker. It's a lot. It, it, it is definitely a lot to go for, but I, I guess it just depends on your situation there. And there were two other people, the mm-hmm. two backups that went a hundred uh, on that as well with Spencer Turnbull. What about Cody Bradford? This is very short term because it's, it's almost certain that Co- Michael Lorenzen is going to take his spot but he has Oakland this week. So he was picked up in 40 main events. He went triple digits in three of them, did not have aggro backups at 26, 65, and 53. Um, I mean, he went as cheap as five and eight in a couple of leagues. So he really ran the gamut from $5 to $125 for Cody Bradford. Just depends on what league you were in going for that one start. I was interested, but he ended up just going a little bit too high for me. Um, I think he was like, 30 something to my 20 something backup i was like if i could get it cool yeah 53 actually to my 21 backup and i was gonna try i was gonna try a a gambit here that uh greg and i were talking about you know i love patrick sandoval right and he bounced back nicely but he has tampa bay this week whatever probably not gonna start that but then next week he's got this like really killer two-step and we were talking about like cut him and try to bait somebody into picking him up for the at Tampa Bay at Cincinnati two step. And then they'll just cut him after he blows up in their face anyway. But there weren't that many guys that I was interested in. So I was like, if I can get Cody Bradford, I'll do it to try to get the Oakland start. But that was it. And I put 21 on Bradford. He went for 53. So I I still have Sandoval. But what do you think of the idea of cutting somebody with an upcoming two step that you think somebody will pick up that will be bad, like setting out a bomb? I don't love it. Um, I just don't think it works very often. You don't think Sandoval would be picked up? I mean, I think he would be picked up. I just don't know that like it's gonna uh, uh, ever work out the way you want it to. This would be that'd be a two step where he just shoves. Based on what? I don't know. You look better okay. in the last one. I picked up. I picked up Sandoval. I love in, Sandoval, but the I picked idea up that, Sandoval for his start this week versus Tampa Bay. He looked much better in his last start. The idea that it's like a high likelihood that he shoves at Tampa at Cincy. No, it's is not insane. a. High, it's not a high likelihood. It's a tiny it's, likelihood. It's a so tiny the gambit, likelihood. It's um. It's the idea that it will happen to you. No, I I, I don't believe like every bad thing. You know, nothing good will work out for me. I thought it was an interesting gambit. I only wanted to do it if I could you get not, you have a particular not paid attention guy. To your own history, huh? You're stuck with me three days a week. Everything <laughs> bad does happen to you. No, I'm I'm able to work around that. Well, we'll see how Sandy does. Uh, he gets Tampa Bay this week. You said you did pick him up for that, so um, that will be interesting. But with Bradford, did you like the Oakland start this week? Were you chasing yeah. that anywhere? 
I was, but like again, like I'm just not. This for me was a week of like, hey, I'm gonna dollar, you know, bids. And it was a quiet I, week. I I think I spent twenty seven dollars on Ezekiel Durant. I like that. I yeah. I got an Ezekiel Durant type guy and Oliver Dunn. Yeah. So like um, I I think that was my biggest bid this week was twenty seven bucks on in a in a missed twenty seven dollar bid on Jose Abreu. I got Jake McCarthy for 36 to 31, which felt good. And then Ivan Herrera, a little bit hot at 27 to 12, but I really like him. And yeah. uh, and I thought that, you know, with the Wilson Contreras injury, even if Contreras is okay, maybe they DH him a little bit, get Herrera behind the dish, and dude can hit. So I went pretty aggro on that one. Um, and, but 27 is not going to kill you. No. 27 bucks. So feel good there. Anyway. Bradford, what do you think happens though? Do you think that they're, I was talking about this in the Rotowire chat yesterday with uh, Scott and Jeff and just a quick moment to say uh, our, our love and condolences go out to Jeff. His mother passed away. Oh. Um, he did the show yesterday and said, you know, one, one of that time away with, with friends to kind of, you know, not think about it for a moment. But uh, again, I don't know if he listens or not, but he knows that we love him, care about him yeah. and hope everything's all right there. Uh, but we were talking about, Cody Bradford and I was like the thing of it is if he does lose the spot to Lorenzen I don't know that he's not fantasy viable I think he becomes the multi-inning swing man that could put him in 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 line for wins perhaps like upwards of two times a week and he's still gonna get six to eight innings a week type deal I'm not saying that it's better for them fantasy to do that but there could still be a lot of upside. I think if Bradford gets cut this week after the Oakland start because Lorenzen's coming back, that I might go jump on Bradford and kind of have him as that multi-inning swingman. What do you think about this, given the nature of innings and the guys that they have? There, there's going to be somebody that goes short every week, it seems like, that would give Bradford an opportunity to put up three, four innings, no? Well, I think one of the other things is like, hey, is every single one of the guys other than Bradford and Lorenzen um, guaranteed a rotation spot uh, True. next week. Uh, like John Gray hasn't been amazing. Um, I mean, he's but, guaranteed unless he gets hurt, though. But there is thinking, another guy who we have loved, or at least I have loved in the past. Well, your, who, your buddy. Yeah, who has two starts against Houston this week. I know because uh, of a scheduling quirk because it's a carryover series. Yeah, he gets Fromber twice as we talked about on Friday. That's crazy. So and that's yeah, Andrew Heaney is who we're referring to. Uh, if Andrew Heaney gets blown up uh, in these two starts, which could very easily happen, that's wouldn't true. he play really well out of the bullpen anyways? Absolutely, maybe he becomes that guy. But then would you have interest in him for that exact same reason? Probably not. It's still Andrew Heaney. I know, but if he's, I don't know. I'm kind of interested in in this idea of whoever it is, more so Bradford. I like him a little bit better as the swing man, getting some leveraged opportunities to go against, to, to maybe snake some wins, even though they're not starting. So I don't know. Just keep an eye on it. If things, if he does get moved out after this week, uh, which is certainly possible. Maybe don't cut him or do if you're in my league so I can pick Cody Bradford. Up. Yeah. I mean, I think here's the thing is to like, like Lorenzen still needs another start. Maybe, you know, he needs another start after that. Like, yeah, and, he's not guaranteed and, this week. And it's not like Andrew Heaney, Nathan Evaldi have been like the healthiest. John Gray have been the healthiest of course. guys. Like, of course, this could easily get figured out here in the next two weeks just because like either Heaney sucks or. Uh, or one of these guys gets, you know, hurt, or they could, I mean, if they move to a six man rotation, I wouldn't be surprised either. So also, uh, also viable. So, uh, yeah, I would hold on to Bradford just for right now and kind of see what happens. Yeah, I think so too. Again, unless you're in my league, cut him. Let me, let me get at him. Yeah. Cause I wanted him. Okay. Uh, Graham Ashcraft to start this week, put him on the radar for a lot of folks did miss some bats does his does this now three pitch mix he's added a cutter so it's sinker slider cutter it is three pitches but you know they're not that distinct is he gonna finally start missing bats are you in on graham ashcraft oh uh, i had some bids on him i didn't don't think i got him anywhere uh <laughs> he just like like this is a great week to start him. He's got two start versus milwaukee which isn't necessarily an offense you're super scared of and then he goes to Chicago 
to face the White Sox, who we've already talked about, is miss or missing their two best bats. Uh, and they and weren't they, good before. They were, that. Yeah, they weren't good at all before that. So like, you know, both him and Montas were guys that were, like I were recommending as two starts uh, for my two start article uh, that I do every week at Fantasy Pros. Uh, it scares the crap out of me. Like I just because I think I think Ashcraft's one of those guys that could just like you know go go into an outing and completely dominate and then also go into an outing and just get completely worked and there's no rhyme or reason yep. to either of it like he could just dominate the brewers who have a you know a pretty decent lineup i uh, like the brewers but i'm not yeah, I, do too. I am running ashcraft here though despite the brewers because yeah. i want the white Sox. but he, he could get crushed stuff. by the white Sox just because that's who graham ashcraft is exactly it's like so it's uh it is a risk, but I think one worth taking because especially that White Sox start is really, really juicy. And then uh, Alec Marsh. Now, he kind of did, you know, what you're talking about with Ashcraft where it wouldn't even be surprising if Ashcraft, like, dominated Milwaukee and got crushed by the White Sox, like you said, kind of did the reverse of what we expect. That's kind of what Marsh did this past week where he had a two-step, but the reason you really wanted it was the White Sox. So, of course, he dominated at Baltimore yeah. and then was pretty bumpy against the White Sox. Eight hits, a walk, uh, three runs, and four and two-thirds with only three Ks. But you got that spicy win against Baltimore, so all in all, a successful two-start week for Alec Marsh. He was a spring standout, so he started to get some buzz in deeper formats. Where do we stand on Alec Marsh? He, tr he gets a trip to the Mets this week, so you're certainly not afraid of that offense. Are you in on Marsh as a potential pickup for uh, Bieber or Strider? I picked up Marsh last week for the two star, and I'm just kind of holding on to him right now. Excellent. Uh, and I, I grabbed him. A couple I'd start of him weeks. this week. Yeah, I think I'm starting him this week. Mets uh, are the lowest WRC plus in baseball. Yeah, he's made some clear improvements, especially in being able to find the zone, uh, which is important. That park really helps out in terms of limiting the home runs. Uh, I think there is more strikeout stuff than we've seen so far this year. Uh, so I, I like March as a guy, especially in deeper leagues, uh, that you can kind of play matchups with. I'm not going to start him every time, but I, I think he will uh, be a good, pretty good team streamer here for the next uh, few weeks or months. Exactly. I think that's exactly where I'm at with um, with Alec Marsh. You know, this Royals team has really started to – cultivate some interesting starters they got the ace with reagan's that you know was drafted very high people love him but then their other four guys are available across yeah. the different formats lugo singer waka marsh and have different levels of appeal i think lugo waka are, are streamers team streamer types in shallow leagues again i'm i'm starting them pretty consistently in deeper formats are you and then singer go are ahead. you starting singer this week versus houston no i would start lugo yeah, not but not singer yeah, uh, and you get you get Alec Marsh at the Mets, and, and he Waka gets the Mets, the Mets. and he and yeah. Waka they get the Mets. Their auto starts, yeah, uh, against the Mets right now. Yeah, and but honestly, I'm not, I'm not starting Singer right now against Houston. I know he's looking. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I'm with you, and you've been a Singer guy, so for yeah. that, he means even more when you're saying it. Let me pivot a little bit. The Lugo Reco for the shallow, flip that to Waka, yeah, because they're pretty interchangeable anyway, and he gets the Mets. Yeah, I'd New much York, rather. Have, I'd much rather have that. Yeah. Go with that start, and don't worry about Lugo this week, and then bounce back with Lugo next week at the White Sox home to Baltimore. If Agreed. you're in the shallow league where he's pickupable, yep, aka rosterable. Um, all right, that's the pitching. It's not great out there. I do think if you're in a shallow league, there's more appealing arms for obvious reasons. It's deeper pools. I'm not stating much there. Some interesting guys this week, though, because I do think the starters kind of led the charge in uh, in the main event pickups and whatnot. And main event isn't the only type of deep league, by the way, so I, I know we kind of focus on that. But some of those guys, like there's kind of a middle group, too, that we probably could have gotten into that is available in some shallows and some deeps. But if you have any questions specifically, we're always available. In fact, Justin's going to be doing his chat here soon. Obviously, by the time you're listening to this, his chat is over. But every Monday afternoon, he does a chat at noon central one eastern and you can get your weekly questions answered and if you got pickups that you can do freely um, on a monday afternoon he's always there answering questions uh, which is super super helpful after injuries with lineup setting and everything but let's talk story trevor story out for a while with a shoulder injury again it was obvious immediately he would go for a ball landed awkwardly rolling around writhing in pain you knew it was bad he knew it was bad Going to be out for some time. I think he's a pretty easy cut, although I don't know if they've said exactly what it is yet. Um, 
No, they haven't. So maybe not an auto cut yet, but yeah, I, I, I in shallow leagues I would cut him. In deeper leagues, maybe I'm holding it to at least figure out what's what. But it says could or have a lengthy absence. Yes, you could let me trade you Jorge Mateo for him. Correct. You could o- you could always do that when somebody loses a story in a 30 team league. But yeah, he is on the IL. So if you're in a league with ILs, just put him there. That's easy. But in the main event universe, I think I'm. Probably I think I would have cut him last night. I, I, no, I think I'm, I'm I'm holding just to see one week, like just to see what the injury it's, it's is. It's probably fair. It's probably prudent to just hold. But I, I would have maybe uh, I would have maybe moved on. But let's talk replacements for him in the shallower formats. You've got. Uh, Somebody like a Jackson Merrill, who is an outfielder right now, so he's actually going to work for Luis Robert as well, um, and he is available in those shallow One formats. game away from picking up outfield eligibility. He'll have that outfield eligibility for you, so you can you know, use him to replace either injury. I definitely like Jackson Merrill a decent bit. Where are you at on him as far as a shallow league pickup for the Padres? Uh, he's been pretty impressive so far. Like Big four-hit I... effort yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I still stand by my overall thoughts on him from prior to the season, which is I think he's a compiler. Like, I don't think Jackson Merrill has a standout tool for fantasy necessarily other than batting average. Uh, but in order for that to work for fantasy, you need him to play every day. Well, guess what? He's playing every day. Like, he's mm-hmm. he, like, uh, I dropped Tommy Pham because I thought Tommy Pham was going to end up in San Diego mm-hmm. uh, and kind of you know, knock Merrill back to the minors, but uh, Merrill's playing well enough where he, I think he's just going to keep playing every day. Like, I don't think it's going to be a ton of home runs or a ton of stolen bases, but just enough to keep you interested and a good batting average sitting 324 right now. So, uh, and, and like I said, playing pretty much every day. So uh, yeah, I like Jackson Merrill a lot, especially if you need batting average. Yeah. Uh, and batting average is difficult to get. I think he's going to be playing as long as he can. You know, as long, as long as he's not totally in a crazy struggle, they need him. They're not just giving a young guy a chance. They need Jackson Merrill. He is a premium prospect. So I think he's going to get that compiling opportunity that you talk about with him. And again, it's so difficult to find batting average that even if it is a little empty and it's maybe like a light double double, mm-hmm. which is ten plus homers, ten plus steals, um, I'm okay with that. I, I really yeah. do and like I think Jackson that is, Merrill a good bit. I think he's probably like a 10, 10, 12, 12 kind of guy, but with a good batting average and uh and he's walking. He's walking over ten percent of the time right now, like on top of that batting average. So like that's that's got some value. He's got good control of of the plate there, does uh, mm-hmm. does Jackson Merrill, and it, it's really intriguing. Um, this guy is going to qualify for the outfield one as well, but at Yahoo, Sedane Raffaella of the Red Sox, Story's teammate, does have shortstop. So that's why I included him on this list. ESPN, he will not qualify there, but Yahoo, he will. So you can use him as a story replacement. What do you think of Raffaella? He looks, uh, he looks like an electric player, right? Like every time he's doing something, it's exciting, though a lot of that does come on the defensive side. Yeah. I do have some questions about his bat. What do you think about Sedane Raffaella? So another one of these guys where I say my preseason thoughts on Raffaella kind of stick, which is uh, there are some loud tools, especially the, uh, on the defensive side of the ball, but like there's power and speed in the profile. The problem is he really struggles with swinging outside of the zone. He really struggles yeah. making in-zone contact. Uh, it is on display right now where he is swing outside of the zone almost 50% of the time, 49.3% of the time. Like that isn't going to be sustainable. His swing strike rate is 14%. Uh, he's only making 82% in zone contact, which is actually better than I expected. I really thought he was going to be like in the seventies in end zone contact. Uh, there's going to be a lot of strikeouts when he does make contact. It's going to be hard, but I, I, I think he he's one of these guys that like if he is going to continue to play like he's not going to be very close to the top of the lineup he's going to be at the bottom of that lineup oh yeah uh, and and i and i don't know how long they're going to let him just run out there if he's swinging and missing as much as he's done it so mm. uh, i mean he's got like an 85 wrc plus right now for sedan Raphael. yeah if he's in that world i think the defense is enough to eat it now that doesn't mean it's good enough for fantasy purposes obviously the problem but is, I think, is the I think Red he's going to str- keep running him out. I think he's going to strike out at like a 35% clip. Like I, if it's I mean, 35%, that's going to be rough because he walks yeah. single digits. Yeah. Um, 
it's at 26 right now. If it's in that range, that's livable. But if it if it pushes into the mid 30s for Rafaela, he's swinging outside the zone 50 percent of the time, like that. He chases for sure. Like yeah, this, it's, why is it's the pitcher scary. even going to throw it into the zone for him? You would think that that would be a bad idea. Yeah, like he's this is need to this show is Javi Baez that he can level. be patient. Yep. Yeah. So right I'm, down to I'm, the excellent defense, right? Yeah, it's very Javi Javi Baez ass. Which, like, if Javi Baez didn't have that contract, would he be playing every day? No, I don't think so. I mean, I maybe the defense. Most days because of the defense, yeah. but yeah, you're you're right. Especially last year when he was toting a 60-something WRC+. Plus. We'd be talking about Javi Baez like we talked about Nick Ahmed. Yes, it, it would be that that kind of vibe yeah. um, for sure. And by the way, Baez looking no better this year with a no. negative 22 WRC+. Plus. Who could have seen that contract not working out? Wow, so surprising. Ezekiel Tovar. I know you're not the biggest fan of his, but, um, you know, we're scraping the waiver wire. We got to find some things. They're finally starting to get some Rockies home games, including three to start this week against Arizona. Two homers in a steal for Tovar. Is striking out a ton, though, and the swinging strike rate has jumped up to 22% to foster a 31% K rate. Is walking more than he did last year at 10%, double what he was doing last year. So I guess there's a little positive there. But uh, what do you think of Tovar as a pickup? You know, putting aside for a moment your thoughts. I'm not putting them aside because they they color where you're at. But given what's available, is Tovar somebody that can even uh, crack your crack your potential pickups? Um, I mean, I would much rather have Jackson Merrill. Like, I mean, I, I get like people are always going to be enthused by uh, Colorado, but they always they're always like, oh, he plays in Colorado, like. They also have to play outside of Colorado, and you get that negative, like you know, down downgrade when you. Well, leave Colorado's Colorado. not magic either. Yeah, uh, sorry, it, sorry to interrupt you, but like, you still have to be a good player on yeah. some level. It does not just magically make you good. It enhances you, yes, no doubt about it. But he put up a seven fifty three OPS at home last year. Ezekiel Tovar yeah. did, right? So it's like, you got to still be able to do something. So I'm with you there. Um, so I don't think you're particularly interested. I want to bring up no. another guy that I just added to the list because we've talked about him, but I didn't realize he was only 25% rostered and he's still How? running. I, I don't know. So that's why I didn't include him originally because I didn't think Bryce Terang was going to be that available even in shallower formats. And yet here he is um, very available. And so we got we to talk about him as well. Now he is 63% at Yahoo. So Yahoo, y'all are doing y'all are doing it right there. But ESPN, and, you're at 25%. What's going on over there? And part of that is I think that, you know, both Yahoo and ESPN caters to points leagues where the stolen bases aren't as valuable as okay, that's they fair. maybe um, are for, for Roto. But, like, I think Bryce Trang should still be rostered in points leagues. Like, he's just – I would think so. He's making a ton of his own contact. He's stealing bases. He is, you know – Ride the hot streak. Every day. Like, just ride the hot streak right now. Like, yeah, I mean, he should be rostered in every league. Um, somebody asked me and, you know, and we can loop in a guy from the, th from the deeper list, like, uh, would I drop Tyro Estrada for, uh, Bryce Terang, um, and Jose Caballero, uh, or, or Jose Caballero. And I said, yeah, I think I would definitely for Terang. I don't, I think I would, uh, the Estrada looks lost. I was not a big Tyro guy, but I'm not ready to take my victory lap. It is still just 10 games, but I mean, with the way to here's my concern about terrain though, about picking them up now, especially for somebody like Estrada is that potential seesaw where you then get the come down of terrain while Estrada, you know, regresses back toward the mean there. And so then you end up getting, I believe Jeff Erickson calls it whipsawed where you don't get, I said seesaw, but. I guess similar concept, but where you don't get any of the goodness, then are you worried about that? Like a 192 Babbitt for Tyro, he's going to be fine. Yes, he's striking out a ton. That's probably your biggest concern. 33% yeah. K rate, 16% swing and strike. He just looks lost at the plate. Yeah. Like he just, it like, does not look good at all. Yeah. It's, uh, for me, it's, I, I, for me, the numbers or whatever, like it just, the way he looks at the plate, it looks like a guy who's, and he's a bad defender too. So, um, you know, they're starting Nick Ahmed at shortstop just to improve that defense. So, if Tyro's a bad defender and he's uh, struggling at the plate, I just worry he's going to lose his job at some point. 
Uh, I would cut Tyro in a shower format in yeah, like yeah. main event format. I think I'm still going to ride it out for a bit, but I would go for, I'd go for terrain. I will ride the hot streak with terrain. I know it's going to come down to earth, but even when it does, he should still be getting bags whenever he's on because mm -hmm. he's running yep. wild right now. And so, yes, the 474 Babip will come down. No crap. Absolutely. Um, but even if he's hitting 230 with a 320 OBP, dude's running. And those bags are great, especially in Roto. Now in points, a little bit different. You maybe cut them quicker there when the when the come down happens. But for now, he's just got to be rostered over at those ESPN leagues, only 25% rostered. Um, and then Oswaldo Cabrera does not have shortstop everywhere, but he does have it again over at Yahoo. So I included him here. Um, and he'll be, uh, let's kind of like bring him in on the uh, Robert situation that we're going to get into as well, since he is outfield eligible right now. And he's going to get the third base this week. Yeah. So tomorrow, probably tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go with, uh, with Cabrera. If you're picking him up for Strider or for story or Robert, we talked about him last week because he was a fast starter. You had a fine week this week. Are you still in on him? Do you like Oswaldo Cabrera as a potential shortstop fill in at Yahoo? Yeah, I mean, I think the batting average is definitely going to come down, but I think he's going to play regularly for right now, at least until DJ LeMayu comes back. And uh, like I mentioned last week, like DJ LeMayu doesn't need to be an everyday starter. They can just make him a utility infielder when he comes back if Cabrera continues to hit. He's making amazing in-zone contact, 93% right now. So uh, that's elite. So and Oswaldo can be a super util, giving yeah. everyone a breather mm -hmm. um, as well. So like. I, I still see avenues for Oswaldo to play, even if DJ LeMay, who comes back healthy and they and they insert him into the lineup. I don't think it cuts Cabrera mm -hmm. out of the picture if he's playing well. So yeah. I've made my my piece about him. I love Oswaldo. I'm really in. Jackson Merrill's the clear runaway here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where do you and then Terang? I think we want to ride that think, hot streak. I, I think Terang's number one for me, just because I think that speed is game changing. Okay. Uh, and then it's Jackson Merrill then Cabrera, then Tovar. Uh, no, you know what? I'm going to go Tovar, then Cabrera, then Rafael, just because I know Tovar is going to continue to play. Like, yeah, Tovar, I'm still going to go Cabrera, but then Tovar and then Rafael is the easy last. Because we're talking right about in, in deeper leagues, like plate appearances are king. So for me, True. like, like I know, like even striking well, out. Well, Tovar's already rostered in deep leagues, though. Yeah, that's true. That's why it's, that's why oh, it's that's the right. shallow. Oh, so, so go, yeah, in shallow leagues, I'll go with Cabrera. Go go with the hot hand in the shallow leagues, and then we we figure out what's going on mm -hmm. in, in a couple of weeks. Now deep leagues, Caballero, you already mentioned him. Tampa yep. Bay, Blaze Alexander coming in for Jose, uh, excuse me, Geraldo Perdomo, who's out for a month, and then David Hamilton, Hook'em Horns, uh, going to get some PT f for the Red Sox with Story out. What do you like there um, when you're trying to replace Story in the deeper formats? Um, I mean Caballero, if he's available. Like that to me, like he seems like he's got the everyday playing time in Tampa Bay for right now. His defense is great. Uh, he steals bases. I do worry that once Taylor Wallace comes back, that maybe he loses some of that playing time. But that's it. And you had mentioned that last week. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But that's a discussion for, you know, a few weeks or maybe even a month down the line. So I think for right now, Caballero is the dude. Uh, Blaze Alexander is interesting. The problem is he, again, is another compiler. Now he's going to compile while. At least a month, out. right? Yeah, I probably longer than a month, my guess. So uh I think that Alexander is interesting in deeper leagues, and he was one of the most picked up players in main events this week. Yes, he um, was. But if you're looking for just like a little flash, uh a guy that could just like go freaking crazy, David Hamilton has insane stolen base numbers. He could go Terang style. He exactly. Could, like, he could make Terang look slow. Uh, <laughs> like So, like, David Hamilton is, like, famous. I mean, one, for just the amount of stolen bases he stole in the minor leagues. In 2023, he stole 59 bases between AAA and a couple in the majors. Uh, he stole 70 in 2022. 70 for 78 that year, too. And he is the guy that, like, when you sort by stolen bases in the Steamer 600 every year, is, like, leading the major leagues in yep. stolen bases because they automatically just give you six minutes play appearances and say, this is what he would do if he got that opportunity. He might have the opportunity now. Uh, and so David Hamilton is a guy, like, yeah, I would I would throw a couple bucks on and go, like, hey, let's see what happens. Because all of a sudden, if you could just fall into 50 stolen bases, that would be insane. And doesn't totally get the bat knocked out of his hand either. Already has a homer, mm -hmm. 
um, had double digit homers last year. So, you know, Walks, kind of interesting. He's there. a double digit walk guy all throughout the minor leagues. Like, exactly. Yeah. I, I like Hamilton. If, if I'd had a spot, I'd have been more interested in him yesterday, but I just really didn't. Uh, he's actually still available in at least one of my mains. Oh, wow. He didn't get picked up in any mains. That's kind of interesting to me. I'm I'm a little surprised he didn't. He's zero um, percent. I kind of wish main I event. had. So maybe maybe he could just have a quiet first week. And, and That's then... the thing because if he pops off this week, there <laughs> he goes steals the five price. bases this week. We're screwed. Yeah, uh, it, it's game over there. Um, but no, he he's intriguing. I think I think the reason that people were cautious is we don't know what kind of yeah. playing time uh, David Hamilton's going to get. He played one of the weekend games. There, you know, there were two. He's a lefty. So he'd be on the strong side with Pablo Reyes. So I, I'm really surprised that it was 0%. That yeah. stuns me. I thought I was going to see at least a handful of, of pickups there for David Hamilton, but nope, none. Wow. Um, yeah, he's on my radar for sure in the deeper formats if I'm replacing Story. It's an in-house replacement too. But between Caballero, Alexander, and Hamilton, uh, oh, Alexander Hamilton, is that the order that you have them? Uh, yeah. Me too. Well, I'm, too. I might I might put Hamilton above Alexander okay. only because the upside is just so great if, if, if things were to work out. But I think, I mean, again, plate appearances are king. Blaze Alexander is going to have to plate appearances for the next month. I think that's, you know, and then in the deeper leagues, that's why I'm going to lean that way. But um, I'm excited by Hamilton's upside too. And again, former Longhorn does add to my bias a little bit there. I want to get that on the table just so you guys know where I'm coming from there, but I do like him. All right, Luis Robert Jr. Let's finish up with him. We talked about Merrill. We talked about Oswaldo Cabrera. Um, MJ Melendez in shallow leagues. He's oh, popping boy. off. He's yeah. blasting right now, looking nice. Lower roster than I thought. I was actually kind of surprised, only 15% over at ESPN. And, you know, part of that is that it's not five outfielder leagues. He, he doesn't yeah. really have catcher eligibility at ESPN. I shouldn't say doesn't does really it, as if he, he does doesn't. it Yahoo though. He does it like, Yahoo though. And thus he's going to have uh, a higher roster rate. He's 71%. So not nearly as available. So we're really kind of narrow. I agree, but we're kind of narrow focusing ESPN here. Unless, but check your Yahoo. Never assume. Melendez, what do you think about him as the replacement for, for your Robert shares if he got hurt for you? Love it. I think Melendez is one of those guys that people kind of discounted a little bit too much in drafts because Agreed. he lost the catcher eligibility and he had some struggles last year, but he's just a really good bat in the middle of a, a much improved lineup in Kansas city. Uh, and like he's showing kind of what he can do. And I think this is one of those guys you can pick up and probably hold for a while. I, I do too. I'm actually really excited about him. He was somebody that was on my board. I didn't get a ton of him. I'm not trying to like come around and be like, I was super in now that he has three homers. But I wasn't out because they, they, he didn't have the catcher eligibility. It was one of these things where it's like, this guy's still 25. He's shown some intriguing skills in his first two years. If MJ Melendez took a big breakout this year, I would not be at all surprised. Been a league average hitter for about 1,100 plate appearances as a major leaguer going into your age 25 season. Like that's kind of ripe for a potential breakout. I know you've been yeah. hot on this Royals team. If he was a big part of that and he became, you know, like a real plus hitter, we just wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, DH and outfield capability, not really going to catch it at all. I don't even think like a Perez injury would necessarily get him back behind the dish. So throw away that pipe dream. But at Yahoo, he already qualifies. So you can still get some of that goodness. What about our boy Brenton Doyle, who we've talked about in the deep league situations, but now he's fully rostered at the main event. So now we kind of flip to the shallow formats for Brenton Doyle. Does he give some intrigue there? Especially, like I said, with the Rockies starting to get some home games, they got a three-game set this week against Arizona at home. Are you in on Doyle for a shallow format? Uh, for a sh for a shallow format, probably not. I mean, he's still striking out a thirty-five percent clip, not really walking. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I mean, I guess if you can just stream him for the home starts, like. I guess I would take the gamble, but I think it's a lot more difficult in shallow leagues to kind of do that because you tend to not to have a ton of bench spots. Um, yeah. So I'm probably more interested in a guy who's going to be playing more regularly uh, or sorry, that you can use more regularly than you would. Yeah. Use, playing in your roster. Leagues. Yeah. He, uh, Brenton Doyle plays every day. It's just that you don't always want it 
yeah in, in in the shallower formats especially when you're talking three outfielder like it's tough when when they finally start to get those like full weeks at Coors then you take a look I know that's a bit obvious but I'm just saying like that's when I think he would find some shallow league mm-hmm. viability for me but until then ah uh, I don't know by the way I'm looking and I don't want to assume like our listeners like they're all playing in the toughest leagues or whatever I'm not like an arrogant asshole about it but I didn't bring up some of these guys because like, oh, they're not going to be available. But I look at ESPN and I see like Tyro O'Neill's forty three percent, Jaron Duran's forty one percent, Taylor Ward's twenty eight. So grab all those guys over these guys, like absolutely. Like, if these types of guys are available, I didn't include them because I just don't know how available they're going to be in the leagues of our listeners. But I don't want to assume. So as I'm looking at this board, I wish I'd have put some of these other names here. Jaron Duran one, Tyler O'Neill two, Taylor Ward Taylor three. Ward three. Yeah. Uh, I think I go well, O'Neal, I, I w- Duran, Ward, but either like any of them, all, all of the guys that guys, we're talking yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so then let's go into the deeper leagues that I do have more familiarity with, so I do know who's available. And let's start with Will Brennan. He's the strong side platoon DH in Cleveland, which actually um, kind of annoys me because I want to see David Fry get more PT and Brennan's preventing him from it, but Brennan's playing well too. So, you know, shouts to him. He's not uh, taking the time and not making the best of it, but he is kind of an empty average with a little bit of speed type guy, 296 average so far, two steals, doesn't strike out, you know, just heavy contact could maybe get some runs as well Is Will Brennan. I mean, he's not going to be a great replacement for yeah, Robert. Not it's going to be hard to replace Robert his skills. Get, yeah. But what do you think of uh, of um, Will Brennan? Excuse me. I, he's a boring accumulator, and he's a platoon player, so he's not going to accumulate the way you necessarily would like him to. Uh, eventually, they're going to bring up uh, what's his name? Uh, God, uh, Chase Delauder. Uh, Ch- yeah, Chase Delauder. Uh, so, like, I Brennan, like to me, like, like he was on my list as kind of a backup guy, but I, I think I'd rather have the next two guys we're going to talk about. Yeah, Jake McCarthy, I already hinted at because I picked him up. Was yep. still available in quite a quite a number of leagues. So, hey, I jumped in. Uh, is going to Colorado. Is playing with Alec Thomas on the bench. Now, they got some lefties coming up, but he played against a couple lefties last week. So, you know, they, can, they can't always take out both Peterson and McCarthy. And you know Peterson's 1,000% coming out against lefties. It, you know, will McCarthy always? Not necessarily. Sometimes they can go with Grichuk and Newman, which is what they did on Sunday with the lefty. Um, but I like McCarthy, and I'm very interested in him. And he can give you like a reasonable facsimile of R- Luis Robert. We've seen it yeah. before. So he was a priority. I think he would be a priority for anybody that did lose Robert. I trust that you like um, uh, Jake McCarthy a good bit as well. Yeah, I actually picked him up the week before. Uh, thankfully nice. you, or thanks to you, like because you messaged me like, oh, Alec Thomas just got hurt um on sunday and i was like all right jake mccarthy here we go and i needed stolen bases in that league as well perfect so, perfect uh, yeah I, I think mccarthy is the guy that you go grab right now especially if you need speed uh because he should play regularly and uh there's a ton of speed in that profile and we've seen him just be a really really valuable fantasy player in short spurts previously Absolutely. I like Jake McCarthy a good bit. And then we'll finish up with an in-house replacement. He's not going to fulfill that speed of Robert, but if you're looking maybe to replace the power, perhaps Gavin Sheets time is upon us. Uh, The playing time should be there and, you know, already has a homer. I I love Gavin Sheets. Uh, There's been so many Lucy, Charlie Brown kicking the football situations with him, but he's playing. And so what do we think of Gavin Sheets in the deeper formats? He was a decent pickup this week and still has some availability. Are you in on Gavin Sheets for the five billionth time? Yeah, especially because in some leagues he's outfield and first base eligible, That's right. which is always uh, fun. Including so. the main, which means he yeah. should be kind of everywhere, right? Because mm-hmm. the main uses the standard 20 games, so then you really should be able to get him at first outfield everywhere for Gavin Sheets. Yeah, there's a lot of power in the bat too. Like, And this is a guy who, if he's making consistent contact, like he should be able to, you know, unlock, you know, 25 plus homers in a full season worth of plate, uh, plate appearances. And right now he's going to play, like you said, like he may be on the strong side sometimes, but I think he's going to play fairly regularly in Chicago because they just don't have anybody else. I mean, I, I really, this, this is an awful team. Like, 
Like it I really thought, I thought well. it was a bad team before, and now losing. And uh, they really showed Robert, you that it's like yeah. next level once Robert goes out. So yeah, Robert and Eloy goes down like that. Yeah, just disastrous. Uh, so it, it, it uh, is, it is brutal. But it creates some playing time opportunities. Uh, let me throw in one other guy just because he's on that team as well, and maybe could give you a little tinge of the speed too. Do you like Dom Fletcher at all? Never mind, he doesn't run that much. But do you like Dom Fletcher at all getting playing time? Uh, Again, he he's an accumulator. He's going to accumulate right now because I think he's going to play. So um, I think he's a short term deeper league pickup. But like I, I'd rather if Sheets. I would. Yeah, me too. Have I'd rather go for other guys. I thought yeah. he ran more. I, I thought he was more he like his brother play. and ran more, but he doesn't really. So you're right. He's an accumulator, kind of boring. But anyway, sorry if he got hit by the carnage. Everyone will get theirs at some you, point. You didn't mention the one guy left on the list. I just want. Oh, real who's that? Quick. I'm sorry. You had Bubba Thompson. Oh, yeah, Bubba yeah, yeah. yeah. God, I really wanted to bring him up, bases. Too. You want to know the crazy part is he has four plate appearances. Oh, my God. So he's coming in as like a pinch runner. So if you miss out on Terang, you know, he's not available in the deeper leagues anymore, and you're really chasing that speed, That's the if that's the part that you're really going to miss from Robert, he could be the Rajay Davis of – remember Rajay Davis of old? We yeah. reference it a lot. Gerard Dyson, to, Rajay yeah, Davis. They like, would get yeah. 300 plate appearances, but 30 steals. 30, yeah. <laughs> and so you, you just have to commit to playing him too. You can't try to pick and choose because when you sit him, he's going to steal three bases in a, in a part-time game where he comes in yeah. and steals two bases in one, then gets a plate appearances and steals one more time too. So if you go for Bubba Thompson, just put him in that fifth outfielder spot and let the steals come because they're going to come in spurts and they're going to come at weird ass times too. Yeah. So yeah, I'm glad you I brought him up because like I did that. want to mention Me I'm, too. I'm not, I'm not going to pick him up anywhere. They're painful the roster. When, when I saw him on the rundown, I was like, oh, I got to go check like how many plate appearances he had because I knew, I knew a few of those stolen bases came off of like a pitch That's running. crazy. Uh, four stolen bases, four plate appearances, seven games played, four plate appearances. We got to get his stolen bases over his plate appearances but yeah, yeah i'm with you yeah. i don't roster those guys they don't fit my style and manage yeah. to your it's style just, it's so hard to figure out when those stolen bases are going to come like that's what i'm saying you have to just commit and just and we talk about Luis Arise being a negative in other categories he's literally a neg like he is a zero in all the other categories. yes so you yeah. really have to have the right fit for bubba thompson but if you want those steals they could be out there for you yeah. all right jason or justin excuse me don't look directly at the sun during the eclipse i'm gonna go get my glasses right now I, I got my glasses ready i'm in texas so i've got a chance to get a decent view of it uh enjoy your chat and i'll talk to you on thursday take it easy